Did it all the time, so we talked of honesty, fairness, justice. Out of those times, I counted on you to have the courage to take those dreams out into the world. I can't live your dreams anymore. I want a life of my own. You've been given a gift, Peter. With great power comes great responsibility. Take my hand, son. No, Uncle Ben. I'm just Peter Parker. I'm Spider-Man. No more. No more. Raindrops are falling on my head And just like the guy whose feet are too big for his bed Nothing seems to fit Those raindrops are falling on my head They keep falling So I just did me some talking to the sun And I said I didn't like the way he got things done I don't mean to sound generic, but give us all what you got, man. Give us all that fucking money. Here, man. Pull it up. It's all I got. Pull this it's shit all I got. Up. Hold on, man. Don't think about doing anything funny. Fucking dollar? That's all I got, man. I got a wife and kids. A fucking dollar? What is this? A fucking charity case? <laughs> what do you Pull expect us got, to man. buy? Yeah, a Pull the pop? A fucking soda from like fucking a, a gas station or some shit? That's all I got, man. I swear. <laughs> Alright, beat his ass. No, wait! Oh. Oh. Uh. Hey! Spider Man! Spider Man! Spider -Man. Who in the dilly fuck squad are you? I'm the Spider Man. Now leave that kid alone. You! You think it's Spider Man? Nah, guys. This is the fucking Pillsbury boy, the little fucking muffin thing, and a little Comic Con suit. Hey, Pudgy! Come on, that way. No, you see, man, this is what makes me upset, and I'm sorry I gotta do this. Listen here, you discount motherfucking Spider-Man. I don't care how many neckbeards want to be Spider-Man, but none of you are gonna be. There's only one, and you, buddy, you are not it. Fuck, I could be Spider-Man if I wanted to be. I'm more built to be it than you are. So why don't you fucking web yourself out of this situation? Two Spider-Mans? A la verga, what's a Spider-Man? Got this, boss. Settle down, tough guy. Go get this! What the fuck? They're running in the Superman! Oh, shit! Come back! So, who the hell are you exactly? My bad. I forgot to introduce myself. My name is... Look, I, I, know your, I know what your name is. You're technically Spider-Man, but how the hell did you even get here? I'm the only Spider-Man technically here. Get here? I didn't get here. You see, I was out there fighting the Rhino, and all of a sudden this giant-ass portal just showed up. I tried my best to avoid it, but Horny Boy just ran me down. And now I just showed up here. So, do you want to just get some pizza or some shit? I don't know. Yeah, I'd be down. Any... Should we... You want to do some crimes together? Are we talking um, people selling eighth or just robberies or some shit? We'll figure out along the way. Or right. Zeno's or, uh, or Joe's. Let's go to Joe's. Right. Fuck that guy.
the brains and the creativity of one man lie behind all these characters and more. The Fantastic Four, the Hulk, Spider-Man, Thor, Doctor Strange, the X-Man, the Avengers, Daredevil, Nick Fury, the Silver Surfer. <sighs> if you don't know them, then your kids do. And if your kids don't know them, then I wonder if they're really learning about the world as they ought to learn about it. Spider-Man No Way Home is set to release in theaters of December 17th, 2021, and while I'd like to say that I'm actually excited, I'm not You what? Excited. Although I am a huge fan of Spider-Man, this third film does have me a bit worried and have my expectations somewhat in the middle. You see, the MCU's track record with Spider-Man movies so far are a mixed bag, much like the originals were for Toby and Andrew for most of you fans out there. While Homecoming was good, it really only got better around the film's final act. Tom Holland did great with what he was given from a subpar script. We got to somewhat understand what it's like for him to be Spider-Man, although not exactly. Serious? He didn't have a sense of direction as much as he did right after Homecoming, going straight into Far From Home, Spider-Man ended up becoming a flat-out joke towards most Spidey fans, and I say most, as I see most of you MCU normies and toxic fans with your pitchforks ready to murder me and web shoot me for what I'm about to say. Oh boy, yeah. Spider-Man in the MCU is terrible. No! At least... His standalone movies are. I would much rather watch Spider-Man 3, both Tazza movies back to back since I find those stories more enjoying and a lot more entertaining since I'm able to understand what the hell is going on and not even find them like family friendly cookie cutter type of movies. What? Look. I understand that not everyone is going to agree with me and that's fine. We can all like what we like, but the MCU just doesn't know what to do with Spider-Man, at least in my eyes. Their films haven't honestly made a Spider-Man movie, rather just some cookie cutter all for the family to attend to type movie. They did have a new idea or approach to the character by focusing on Peter Parker as a high schooler but really haven't gone anywhere with it. While in Homecoming we see a bit of Peter's intelligence, we also get some weird forced jokes and character building with Tony Stark and while it was cool having him here as, as a mentor for Peter, it just doesn't work. Most of the plot revolves around Tony Stark or the Avengers for the damage done to the city and it's there to help set up the Vulture's motives and his crew because now they're out of jobs. And uh, look, I'm stopping this for a second. I get that I'm rambling on about the movie's plot rather than Spider-Man's art. So for your patience, it'll be coming right up. So stick to it, webheads. There isn't a sense of responsibility, nor do consequences actually happen in this version of Spider-Man. For every bad guy running off with alien weapons or blowing up a shop like High Top Film said, Everything is fine. And that's what really bothers me. There's nothing that happens for every action that Peter does. And if there is an action, or if there is a consequence, it's just a flat out fucking joke. And the only emotion we get to ever see from Peter feeling either bad or depressed is the scene where he's trapped under a pile of ash and rubble. We see Tom crying showing character and bringing to life Spider-Man as he rises through the ashes like a phoenix. But Far From Home really just took the character, threw him against a wall, and decided to not do anything with him. The decent character building we got from Homecoming just gets turned to shit. They try to add death, and we can see it with both him and Aunt May, Happy and Tony, but it doesn't work. With Tony as his mentor, I can somewhat see it, and Happy being in the films, it doesn't. And having both of them in the Spider-Man films just feels like Spider-Man is supposed to be Iron Man instead, since that's what's going on and being said in most of these films. Hence, the Iron Boy Jr. jokes that we see fucking everywhere. Oh boy, yeah. Also, I'm not trying to throw shade or anything, but 
I know that Marissa Tomei could possibly doing her best as portray could possibly be doing her best at portraying Aunt May, but the way that the MCU or Sony is writing her, like she's supposed to be a sexy aunt in a sense, like eye candy. I don't know. Like, there's really nothing special about Aunt May in this universe that I can really gravitate towards the MCU's Aunt May. Everything she does isn't important. There's no character building scenes with Aunt May and Peter. There's nothing serious between the two. Everything is just the joke between them, especially when Aunt May found out that Peter Parker was Spider-Man. It's just turned into a joke. She's not worried about him or anything. She doesn't try to act like a worried parent, instead just goes with it. And that's sort of what bothers me because in a sense, how could you be fine with it? Tell me how! This is just my nitpicks, you guys can have yours. This is just my opinion on it, but yeah, that's just how I see it. MCU Spider-Man feels too much like a joke, at least in my eyes. What the character needs is more depth, less forced jokes. Buckle up right now. Look at the baby mountain goats! Baby mountain goats! Give us more storylines that make sense. Maybe make some scenes dramatic and serious without any of the MCU's formula that we just keep copying and pasting in these movies. There needs to be more one-on-one -on -one moments with characters close to Pete and be serious at the same time. They don't care about us. We build their roads and we fight all their wars and everything. They don't care about us. We have to pick up after them. We have to eat their table scraps. That's how it is. I know you know what I'm talking about, Peter. Why are you telling me this? Because I want you to understand. That's why Sam Raimi's films work, including Mark Webb. And now before you start to web swing into the comments saying that Tasm is not a great franchise, just sit down and listen. Listen to me now. <laughs> Tasm may not have the best fighting movies, but they did actually work. While they did have some questionable scenes, Mark Webb did try his best to write about the characters like he's supposed to. What Mark Webb did was give us more Peter Parker and just a touch of Spider-Man. Uh, put, put it on! The mask! It's gonna make you strong! Okay, trust me! Put it on! There you go! That's it! That's it, buddy! That's it! Okay, now climb! Come on, Jack! <laughs> Andrew Garfield starts off the film as some nerdy high schooler who no one seems to like or want to hang out with, close to how Peter Parker was in the comics. Mark Webb gave us both Aunt May and Uncle Ben, but decided to give Spidey fans more scenes with Uncle Ben and have an even bigger impact, similar to that of Raimi's Uncle Ben. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Through the death of Uncle Ben, both Spider-Man act out, get revenge on the murder of their uncle. But through it, they learn what it means to be a true hero. They realize that their actions have consequences and have to care of the Phantasm that is a bit questionable, especially in Tasm 2, but still. Tom Holland's Spider-Man lost Tony Stark and instead of letting him grieve, Tony's death is just turned into a careless joke, into a meme, and doesn't add anything to Tom's character. John Watts is really trying to bring Spider-Man to life, but it doesn't help having Sony in one corner and shitty writers in the next, and if you want to know who the writers were for Far From Home, it was Ant-Man and the fucking Wasp, and they definitely fucking ruined Spider-Man in their own fucking movie! I really do want to love Tom Holland's Spider-Man, but Marvel has to step it up and make the character feel special, like when he was first introduced to us in Civil War! Show him being a freaking nerd, like he was in Homecoming, making web cartridges. Make him wish he were dead. Question if he's making the right decisions, and realize the consequences towards every action he makes. I know that the rumors are just rumors out there, but if the supposed leaked script that's out there is the real one. For the people of New York, it could be the end of Spider-Man. 
bringing back these villains for nostalgia is one thing since nostalgia is hell of a drug and I do love these villains thanks to their actors and honestly I don't mind but making the villains tie in with Iron Man or have something to do with him is already really pissed me off. While I can let Homecoming slide with Tony being the source as to why Vulture is bad, having Tony be the reason why yet again another Spider-Man villain appears is because of him doesn't sit right with me. Spider-Man's rogues galleries just feel like either hand-me-down villains in the MCU or sloppy fucking seconds. Don't get me wrong, Michael Keaton and Jake Gyllenhaal are spectacular as their villains, but the writing just doesn't work for most of it. Vulture's motive works, but copying it and pasting it over onto Mysterio just because his project was called Bark is downright horrendous and fucking childish and more so, it's terrifying than seeing Venom with human teeth in Spider-Man 3's behind the scenes photos. I want these villains to feel special, and I know I might get blindsided by nostalgia, but I really do want Spider-Man's villains to not just come off as a threat, but be more connected with the Arachnid rather than Iron Man. I want the villains and characters to not just be themselves, but feel grounded instead of just one-dimensional characters. It's no secret by now that we all know that Spider-Man 3 is going to be connected to Doctor Strange 2, the multiverse of madness that's being directed by God himself, Sam Raimi. We already know that Alfred Molina, Jamie Foxx, Kristen Dunst, Emma Stone I think, as well as J.K. Simmons and Willem Dafoe are returning. But there's a high chance that we could possibly be seeing both Andrew and Toby, thanks to these interviews and fan sightings going around, as well as the rumor that I hope is true that both of these men are going to be the co-leads in the movie going forward. Not executing on this would be a big letdown on both Marvel and Sony sides, as Into the Spider-Verse proved how successful a Spider-Man movie can be with multiple versions being in there, but imagine what that would be like in live action. They don't have to do everything shot for shot, or copy into the or copy into the Spider-Verse, nor use the heroes that don't relate to the plot. Instead, just focus on those that matter. My theory, like possibly everyone else's out there, is that Toby and Andrew's Spider-Man are not only going to mentor Tom Holland's Spider-Man, but guide him into the right path. No more I want to be like Tony Stark or some corny ACDC playing. Instead, maybe some cheesy but deep, memorable scenes with all of them together. Maybe Toby's Spider-Man becomes some sort of anti-hero like The Last Stand, or stays the same. Andrew could possibly be reunited with Gwen, and Tom could probably get to see another universe's Uncle Ben. I really do hope that we get memorable scenes with all the Spider-Men, and that the villains have more meaning and depth, rather than just being cannon fodder. I've assembled as many spider nerds as I could for this video. They were each tasked with the same assignment but could do it in different ways that would make them feel comfortable. While this video is centered around what I want in No Way Home, I felt that this was just as important and needed to be shared with you comic book movie nerds out there. What makes Spider-Man Spider-Man? Now, I know that I also do dig and make a lot of jabs towards the MCU Spider-Man, but you will be hearing mixed opinions through all of my friends here, and I respect their opinions much like you should, so don't go out of your way to bash them for saying what they're going to say, because in their own words, like I asked them to, I wanted them to answer what makes Spider-Man Spider-Man, and you'll be hearing from me as well on what I think makes Spider-Man Spider-Man. Spider-Man to me has always been the underdog, the spider kid who goes up against the odds. No person and no kid in his position really should. He gets beaten down over and over to only get back up and keep fighting. And often what can make that so difficult is how often he is on his own when those knockdowns come. But despite that, he still finds a way to always come back and show how hard overcomes everything else and I personally think 
why we all gravitate to this teenage kid dressed as an arachnid worth over six billion dollars is because we notice our similarities in each of our lives. We are all the underdogs at one point or another. We are the people that go against insurmountable odds who, yes, get beaten down over and over and over again, and who, yes, feel so alone and afraid while doing it, and sometimes it feels like too much. Sometimes it feels like there's no way out and we should just give up everything to have it end. But when we are reminded how others feel the same way, others like Spider-Man, others like your family and friends, if you ask me, a character who can not only inspire us to be better and to never give up, but also show how our neighbor besides us feels the same way we do, a character like that, like Spider-Man, should be celebrated. Hi, my name is Cheese McRamey, and today I'll be talking about what makes Spider-Man, or other words known as Peter Parker, so special. One of the things that makes him so relatable is that he's a teenager. At the time when Spider-Man came out, there wasn't a lot of teenage comics or superheroes. I mean, people have heard of Batman, uh, you know, having, you know, Robin as his sidekick, but having a teenage a teenager have superhero powers it's it's very uncommon really and i think that connects with a lot of younger people whether they're you know 10 year olds to you know you know 18 year olds i mean all you know that demographic it really connects to them another thing that makes spider-man relatable is his responsibilities he has responsibilities to MJ he's got responsibilities to Harry he has responsibilities to Aunt May Uncle Ben these responsibilities keeps him kind of in check you know he's constantly as Spider-Man thinking about these people whether can I go on what do I need to do to protect them against my foes and you know having that you know kind of responsibility of you know taking on these powers and protecting the people he loves is um it can be kind of you know relatable another thing i like about peter is that he keeps going on regardless of what happens uncle ben dies he keeps going on harry uh in spider-man 3 even when he you know is angry at him at that time, he kind of keeps going on, even though he's got the Venom suit. Certain things in his life may be pointing to him that maybe he shouldn't be Spider-Man in Spider-Man 2 from 2004, but he keeps going on. The more that is piled on top of Peter, the more he just keeps on fighting. And that's basically what I have to say about Spider-Man and what makes him so special. This has been Cheese McRamey. Thank you, and have a nice day. Hi, AZ Deadpool here. Welcome to my portion of the video, uh, of Frankie's video of why we're all obsessed with Spider-Man. I mean, what Spider-Man means to us. Hopefully, after this is over and done with, uh, maybe I'll come off as more obsessed with Spider-Man than a one J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into it. Smash that like button and subscribe. You know what to do. Just, just do it. So anyway, what does Spider-Man mean to me? Um, this is someone, a character that goes back to my childhood, basically. Uh, growing up in the 90s, uh, I had Batman the Animated Series, um, which really got me introduced into the world of superheroes. Shortly after that, it was Spider-Man the Animated Series. Um, now, while I still love Batman, and DC for that matter, 
even if they can't, you know, get their stuff together with their movie universe. But that's neither here nor that's a completely different conversation for a completely different time. Spider-Man was my introduction into Marvel. Um, obviously, we know that Marvel is the huge entity that it is today. Um, but arguably before that, um, Marvel wasn't all that great, um, at least, you know, movie wise, because there wasn't much of any movies before that. Um, put it this way, um, Iron Man, back then, back before the movies hit, before the MCU, he was considered a B-level character. Now you throw in Robert Downey Jr., tremendous acting, and everything like that, and a well-written well script. Now Iron Man's one of the more popular superhero sets out there now, um, and everything like that. Um, but again, before that, uh, nothing. There, there was no real superhero movies or anything like that. Um, at least not to the level that we have and uh, come to know and love today. Back in like 1998, we had Blade. Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate our bill. Um, now, people may say like Blade, you know, why Blade? That's that's so you know, um, it's so minor and everything like that. But not really. Um, stop me, be, stop me if you've heard this before. But before, like uh, before Blade, Marvel was on the verge of bankruptcy, and. Um, Blade was a kind of a last-ditch effort. If Blade hadn't succeeded like it did, um, I'm sure like the Marvel Universe as we know it would probably be really, really different. Because Blade was so successful and everything like that, um, that opened the door for Marvel to make more movies because it was successful. Uh, other um, com film companies saw that there was something to this. Flash, uh, so, Blade 1998. Fast forward to four years, 2002. Now we have Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. Um, for this, this was something that um, was special. At, at least, you know, for, for me. Uh, this was, like, the very first superhero movie that I saw in theaters. Uh, I was probably around, I was around 11 at this time when it came out in the theaters. And I remember just losing my mind. I wanted to be like, just like Peter Parker, just like Spider-Man. I wanted to shoot webs from my wrists and fly all over the place, which uh, my parents didn't quite uh, appreciate it is kind of the word, maybe kind of, uh, but you, you get the picture. It was huge. Um, I don't think there was anything like it at the time. Uh, yes, we had Batman, uh, we had Superman movies and everything like that, but this was Spider-Man. Again, like when it comes to the scope of superheroes, um, you like there's there's about like three that come to mind when people like talk about superheroes. Um, at least, well, in the scope of people who are who don't know the the, the lore the deep dive and everything like that. I think it's safe to say that most people will say Batman, Superman, and Spider-Man. Um, that's just how much Spider-Man has transcended into um, mainstream media and everything like that of the sort. He's a household name. People, when people say Spider-Man, they know what that is. So for Spider-Man to be translated onto the big screen, it was... It was amazing. No, no pun intended. That's the best you got? Yeah. Oh, that sucks. Take like a page from that. Um, they need a Kevin Feige of their own to, to be the center of the universe and for continuity and everything like that. Someone to be like, kind of like, you know, the peacekeeper between everything. But again, uh, neither here nor there. Um, I'm skipping over like a lot of stuff and everything like that. But... Um, I think like at the bigger like scope of or the bigger picture of things, one thing that really hit me more recently was um, last year, like towards November, when the Miles Morales PS5 uh, game came out. The main kind of um, 
message behind it, or even into the Spider-Verse, that message was, you know, anyone can wear the mask. That to me is so important because that says that anyone can do this. Anyone can be a superhero. That message is invaluable because that is what inspires hope. Um, everything like that. That can be the reason for someone getting out of bed and everything like that. It's, it's such a wonderful message that, you know, we can do this and everything like that. We're not alone. It takes just a person to be a superhero. Anyone can wear the mask. Like, I'm wearing a mask. Anyone can do it. I think that's so incredibly important, everything like that. Um, I think it's something like Spider-Man, like he represents uh, everything that he represents and how he carries himself. Um, I think that sometimes you almost like forget that he has powers and, you're lo and you lose yourself in the character. At least that's kind of how I see it. Because I've read um, countless comics about him and everything like that. And I know Stan Lee has gone on record saying like that's what he wanted. He wanted to give realism. Um, that's a superhero that had issues and everything like that. And I think that's something that has translated well. Stanley wrote Spider-Man very well. Steve Ditko drew him to life and the combination of those the two of them was just a perfect storm, in my opinion, and which is what has led to so many different things, so many different spin-offs of Miles Morales, your Spider-Gwen slash Ghost Spiders, um, and everything like that. It led to Into the Spider-Verse, which is so, so beautiful. Everything like that. Um, yeah, Spider-Man, it's, he's amazing. Pun intended again. Um, I don't know like if there's ever going to be anything like Spider-Man ever again. Maybe there will be, um, time will tell, but for that matter now, you know, Frankie has to like cut and edit all of this, so yeah. Um, thanks for li listening to me ramble and everything about Spider-Man. Um, and I didn't even include the fact that I cosplay him at times too, because that in itself is an amazing feeling. Cause again, grew up with the character to be able to put on that suit and to see like kids reactions, hands down one of the best feelings in the entire world. Cause that's their hero that they've seen either in a comic or on TV or in a movie come to life, like right before their eyes. Like there's no, there's no real better feeling than that. So this has been my TED talk about Spider-Man. Hope you enjoyed it. Hi, uh, my name's Jerry or Jerry Punked or Flip Torres or Jerry Punked. But um, today I'm here to tell you about what makes Spider-Man Spider-Man to me or yeah. What I consider what makes Spider-Man Spider-Man. After thoughtful consideration and much thought, I've always assumed that what makes Spider-Man most, you know, the webhead, is the ability to overcome. The ability to always do what's right and to always use your past mistakes, your past experiences, trauma, devastation, using that to get better, to become better to grow as a person or a spider. <laughs> Pete has faced a long hardship journey of life. Uncle Ben, Gwen Stacy, Mary Jane, the list goes on and on, John, Dean the Wolf. You know, I could sit here for hours telling you about what he's been through, but what I can also tell you is through all those experiences, through every single journey and story, He's always managed to pick himself back up. Nothing illustrates this more than one of my favorite movies, Spider-Man 3. Surprising. Um, Aunt May goes into Peter's room. It's in his apartment after he strikes down Mary Jane. And she tells him straight up, the hardest thing a man or anyone can do is to forgive themselves. That always struck, that always stuck with me. Even being a little 12, 13 year old going through you know, minor things, and even now, six, seven years later as being a grown adult, <laughs> forgiving yourself is one of the hardest things to do. But what's also hard is 
taking that, taking that experience and turning it into something you can be proud of, that you can look back on and be like, I'm glad that I was able to pick myself back up. And speaking of picking yourself back up, Spider-Man, Into the Spider-Verse, I did not forget the title of that movie. We see a Peter obviously down on his luck, he's devastated and depressed to say the least. We've all been there. We've been through hardships that we just want to lie down and wait for it to end. But not Pete. Not Spidey. He picks himself back up. And throughout the movie, we get to see his journey to forgiving himself. To becoming better. To, and by the end of the movie, we even get to see a Peter that has changed his life for the better. He's not just doing it for others, but doing it for himself. It's an amazing part of the movie that I think many others fail to recognize. Not as a bad thing, but it's just, you know, undergoes and gets swept under the rug. It's an amazing, amazing attention to the character. And I guess what I'm saying is what makes Spider-Man Spider-Man to me is the human in him. The ability to become strong, not just as a spider or a superhuman or whatever you may want to call it, but as a person. He doesn't let these actions define him. And he changes and he grows. Because he is human. Kind of. <laughs> but he's human. I will always have a special place in my heart for Spider Man. He's one of the greatest comic book fictional characters alive, in my opinion. Might be a bit biased. Shirt, mask, tattoo, and the Lego set that I definitely don't regret buying, but I owe a lot to Spidey. Even if he's a fictional character. He's the whole reason I got into this Spider Man thing. <laughs> but what I also owe to him is becoming a better person. What I owe to Spidey is the ability to pick myself back up and to use past experiences to become a better me. That's what makes Spider-Man Spider-Man. It's being strong, resilient. Some other words I can't really think of, but yeah. And I want to say thank you to Frankie. I really appreciate you including me into this video. Can't wait to see where you go from here, and if you're at all interested in me, go ahead and check out my Instagram, jerrypunk.d, as in diamond. But thank you, Frankie, and thank you, everyone else. Hey guys, it's me, that guy Frankie, yours truly, and before we go any further into this recording, I just want to say thank you to everyone in the Spider-Man project that helped me make this video possible. This was the toughest project to do ever since the Joji Iceberg, and I want to give a quick shout out to everyone in the chat, those being AZ Deadpool, Bloxku, Cabolt Spider, the Exo Spider, my great best fr my great friend cheese mcraney friendly neighborhood menace and jerry punk thwip torres if i left anyone out please i apologize i did not mean to i am tired as it is and i will probably put it in the text right there right there please please don't hurt me please don't hurt me please don't hurt me but um, i'm going off topic going off topic but Seriously, without you guys, I don't think I would have been able to even get this video out in the first place because I needed that support. I needed that drive to tackle something that I know I've always wanted to do, but I was afraid of doing. This is by now probably my third or fourth video on the Spider-Man character as a whole because my original, original ones, eh, they're, 
They're pretty shit, and I would not recommend anyone to watch them unless you want to see how much my channel has evolved ever since, especially during the cringe first days that I brought up in the Joji Iceberg. But again, thank you to everyone in the Spider Man group chat that pushed me and carried me forward to even get this video out to every single one of you beautiful nerds out there. And quick shout out to Somber Skies for uh, the, the, the fact that I got to use their music for this video and the fact that uh, they're going to be in the outro. But before we get to that outro, I got to answer my part on what I think makes Spider-Man Spider-Man. To me, Spider-Man is the relatable superhero. And by the relatable superhero, I mean the real down-to-earth grounded character that was made for the average Joe. Kind of like Superman and Batman, but more grounded into reality because of the problems that he faces. Peter Parker is just some average, ordinary teen going through life, and he struggles a lot. He's not exactly confident enough with himself. He is very, very bright, but he struggles with a lot of stuff that go on in his life, whether it's money, girls, and some other stuff. That's always something that I've struggled with. Uh, on the girl part, I don't know because I, I love my friends and I think they. <laughs> but. In all sincerity, I, I felt more related and attached to this character because of the problems that he faces that may seem like more for the comics. A lot of the problems that Spider Man faces are very much real in the sense for actual comic book nerds and people out there everything that he struggles and goes against whether it's spider-man or peter parker since i see it as him living two personas in the way that high top summed it up you don't technically want to be spider-man because of how shitty it is but at the same time it's just the way that he's written is such a beautiful character it's something that I never take for granted because he is one of the best superheroes out there and I mean he and I mean it he definitely is in my top five I don't care I'm a huge Deadpool fan Punisher Blade the Crow as much as I love all those characters they don't stand anywhere near Spider-Man and that's thanks to the writing of Stan Lee and the great art of Steve Ditko and countless others like Alex Ross man like Todd McFarlane I can go on this character has always been a part of my childhood and I knew that there was something special about him because the way that he's written, he's just this underdog character that everyone wants to root for. And they know that he may not win in the end because he he's a superhero that while you think he can save everyone, he really can't. Spider-Man also has problems to the point that not only can he not save everyone, but he may not even get the job done to actually help. He struggled so much, yet he still keeps coming back up and never staying down from a fight. Every time he gets knocked back down, he always gets back up really quick. He reminds me of my favorite wrestlers in pro wrestling. Eddie Guerrero, Rey Mysterio, Daniel Bryan, and the man over here. The man. That being the face painted piece of shit here. And by piece of shit, I mean it respectfully. Darby Allen, I've been face painting myself ever since because the way that this guy does storytelling is just as great as Spider Man. But I've always felt attached to Spider Man just because of the everyday problems, like I mentioned earlier. But he was a character that I always wanted to, in a way, cosplay as, but. I've always been very insecure with myself. I'm not necessarily pushing myself to like even exercise half the time, but if it if it wasn't for friends like the Exo Spider, that being Raziel Magana, or as some of you out there know him as Detective Darby, I don't think I would have actually cosplayed as Spider Man. Gone to Phoenix Comic Con and make great friends like out of reality cosplay, universal cosplay. Matt AZ Deadpool, the most wholesome human being out there possible because Raz always pushed me to do better and not give a shit about what other people think about you. 
And this goes back even during our days in high school where we dressed up as the characters during, I think, Spirit Week. And he was very upset that once he was approached to be, once he was approached to, to once he was approached to get a, a picture of him taken of, he was very upset that they never, I think, approached me when they approached him because we were together during the entire day just dressed as the character. But he never wanted to take the picture unless I was in there with them because he felt that I was just as important because anyone can wear the mask. Anyone can be Spider-Man. And that's the thing that I love about Spider-Man is that while everyone thinks that Spider-Man has to be this, this, that, and that, the character actually isn't. While Peter Parker is the way that, while we grew with Peter Parker, the way that Stanley and them wanted to, Stanley also made it to the point that anyone can wear the mask anyone can be that superhero and without my best friend i don't think i would have even cosplayed as spider-man and i have to thank him for this beautiful shirt and the cosplay that he helped me make i don't know exactly who the clothes supplier was or who the artist is but i got this shirt i believe last year and i've been cosplaying as this version of spider-man ever since because I'm a huge pro wrestling nut. I love Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy, specifically the first one, just because of the wrestler suit. And the fact that I get to say that this is mine, this is my Spider-Man, makes me so fucking happy. I get to dress up as a man. This character has always been with me for so much, man. Like, I can remember also my last year of high school, I wrote a play about Spider-Man. I have some clips I might even put for this video. They're not going to be the best quality and they're not going to be in order because <laughs> my sister didn't record them right. But this character is just so special for me. Like, I don't know where I'd be and that sounds kind of dumb, but this character genuinely means a lot to me because I see myself in the character i want to see myself do better and i have been doing better this channel has been popping up a lot more and i love that i get to make videos like these for you guys and i genuinely do hope that you guys do enjoy it and if you don't that's fine but yeah this is what makes spider-man spider-man he's the guy that will always get back up from any fight never back down and will keep going on and on until he can't he struggles like an av like an average person and he will always try his best to just make life the best that he can possible while he may not save everyone at least he can save some and that's it that's what makes spider-man spider-man in my eyes and before this entry ends Please don't attack any of my friends' comments on what they think makes Spider-Man Spider-Man. That's all them. Feel free to criticize me. I could care less, but respect their opinions. I don't... And I, I respect their opinions because I don't think... And I know this, but without them, I wouldn't have made this video possible. Thank you again to AZ Deadpool, Bloxku, The Cabolt Spider, Jerry Punk only movies I like, Cheese McRamey, and Friendly Neighborhood Menace for pushing me to do this video. Thank you, Raz, for being the greatest friend possible. Thank you, Aviator Man, for making the thumbnail for this video. Thank you both, Aaron and Charles, for always helping and making some art for this video. Also, quick shout out to Somber Skies for playing the best music out there. And you guys are going to hear... Uh, one of my favorite songs by them after this video is over. So uh, yeah, make sure to support them. I'll link down their SoundCloud and their Instagram page. Remember to support your local bands out there, kids. It's Ben, that guy Frankie, yours truly. <laughs>
I'll get a hand. Hey, it's pretty good. I'll get maybe a hundred, two hundred dollars. That's fun, JJ, but uh, it looks like you'll be able to keep pays, right? Well, anyway, back to the interview. Where are we? Uh, you were informing the audience and me about my age, the movies, the gauntlet, uh, trying to get the dice and whatnot. Alright, next one. A couple of events ago, wouldn't have been so either. Hey, you watch ourselves like, catching that. It could be worse, man. You could, uh, you could be eating some really bad undercooked brands, you know, here in New York. And you know how bad undercooked you taste. But if you want to go for some decent food, I recommend Rockies. It's one of the best in the whole city. <laughs> What's up, guys? It's the Exo Spider here. And I have a few words to say about the webhead. And also, thank you, Frankie, so much for letting me be in this video, bro. But, Spider-Man. Oh, man. This character means so much to me. And I've always been so obsessed for as long as I could remember. When I was, like, two years old, I used to play Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 1 on the VHS over and over again until the fucking film came out. And I started crying like a little baby, like the baby I was back then. I was only two. But, I also had Spider-Man 2. And a bunch of merch in those fucking silly string web shooters that would come out every single time a fucking movie came out. But it's always been everything that's appealed to me of Spider-Man. He's cool. He's funny. And he has a sick ass costume, which is aged so fucking well. And why countless artists have illustrated him on the comic panels. And also that he's so relatable. When you're writing a character... You always want to make sure that the protagonist can connect to the readers or viewers in some way to get them emotionally invested. Peter Parker is the everyman. His purpose was to be relatable to us. Because, let's be honest here, life sucks sometimes. You got to you gotta worry about work, bills, family, and relationships that can be rocky with whoever it be mate. It may be to you, you know? Like, we may lose someone who we love that's close to us and will fall sometimes. But it's it's up to us to always get back up and keep pushing forward, like... Which is exactly what Peter does. He goes through literally everything we do. Every single choice Peter makes can affect anything on his life. Those are the consequences of being an ass-kicking, self-sacrificing superhero. And he juggles two different lives, trying to protect the people of the city due to the guilt of his uncle, while just trying to be himself and live his own life with his other responsibilities. Peter is a selfless and amazing person. And even though it's a, it's a comic book fantasy world, the character can still teach us to be, to be better, to be our better selves and stay strong. I think it's crazy how I always loved Spider-Man and being obsessed at a young age, but now as an adult, I find Spidey so much more compelling and I'm way more invested due to how much I can relate to him straight up. And Spider-Man 2 is, is and will always be my favorite Spidey film and, and always will be because how melancholy and dramatic and realistic it is in terms of portraying the web scene. And I swear to God, if they ruin Doc Ock's character in No Way Home. Anyways, anyways, <laughs> off topic. But yes, Spider-Man is the best damn superhero ever made. And for these reasons, and that's what it truly means to be Spider-Man. Thanks, Frankie. <laughs> I'm out. What makes Spider-Man Spider-Man, in my eyes, it's, it's, it's more than just the costume. It's more about the, the man behind the mask, which in this case, I'll be, it, it's, it's Peter Parker, at least to me. He's the guy that started it all. He was the first one. But, yeah, it, it's, more, it's more about the man wearing the mask, the guy underneath the costume. Because, to me... You know, being a fan of mainly Marvel, but I've also dabbled in other comics here and there as well. Comparing all the other superheroes, 
I find him to be the most relatable. He's the most human. He, compared to, say, characters like Superman or, you know, Batman, whatever, Peter Parker's got the most relatable issues that I can just see myself in his shoes. Like, his problems match the problems I have. Like, he has a hard time juggling school and, and work and all this other stuff that an everyday guy can have a problem with dating dating problems relationship issues stuff like that all about trying to juggle being superhero and protecting his city his hometown it's i could see myself doing that you know if, if i were to be spider-man i can see myself having those same issues i can't relate that to like batman i'm not a billionaire you know like he's he's the what do you call it he's like the I can't find the right word for it, but you get what I'm saying though. He's he's that guy. We You can see yourself in him. And I'm just glad that we get to live in a day and age where that topic is just being covered and fleshed out a lot better. You got all these new movies, all these comics, all these shows, whatever it may be, that just does a better job at covering that topic, that subject that isn't covered enough because people tend to forget that it's more than just putting on the costume it's more so about what the story is what his story is not just spider-man the guy underneath the costume underneath the getup because before spider-man it was him and when you put two and two together you get the one thing but you need one to get the the whole pro the final product you need that one thing to get the final product and it's and it's peter parker it's whoever it may be underneath the mask. It's their story that makes up the mantle.
game. It sucks. What the fuck are you guys still doing here? Just end the fucking video. Get out of here. Oh shit, I have a date with Mary Jane! This fucking...